In this video, I'm going to show you where to add custom CSS in your Visual Composer. There's lots of places to do it, and there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to do it. And I'm going to show you which is which. In this video, we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's get into this custom CSS in Visual Composer. I'll see you in the screen capture. There are two places you can add Visual Composer CSS, and one is in the main plugin menu options, and one is inside of a page itself. So if we go to the main menu here, there's a custom CSS option inside there. Let's click on that. And here we can add custom CSS. Now this would be CSS, ideally that would be global to everything. So no matter which page loads, it's okay to have this CSS load and it's not gonna break things. And that's gonna make your editing a lot easier by having global CSS. If you have CSS on every individual page, it might become a nightmare to update that in the future or find out where you're updating, especially if you're using the global and the page specific, then you have to go back and forth and find out where you, the CSS is that you're looking for and then edit it where it has to be edited. So I recommend trying to keep everything in the global CSS if you can and reduce the amount of page specific CSS. I'm going to show you how to do the page specific CSS in just a few moments. But first I want to show you how to type a CSS rule in here because the editor in here actually checks your CSS to make sure it's valid, which is pretty cool. It's not going to check your selectors to make sure they exist, but it's going to check to make sure the CSS rules you're writing are valid rules. So if we start typing in front page, open and close curly brackets, we have an X here saying there's uh, an expected left brace, line one, column 12. So it's telling us where it's expecting things. So the left brace is this one. Now it's expecting, we hover over there, probably expecting a right brace. R brace, column line one, column 13. Now we have a hazard sign, rule is empty. Let's add something in here. I misspelled that and it's saying expected colon. So I just added this in, now it's saying unknown property. DISL is an unknown property. So I'm gonna change the spelling to spell it correctly, to display, and now we have no more warnings. Unfortunately, this won't even work because this front page, it's not selecting an ID nor is it selecting a class, but it did check the rule to make sure we have the right rule. It checked to make sure we had the left and right braces or brackets. It's really handy to have this thing show you where you have mistakes in your CSS code. And this type of code support is also in the page specific CSS, which I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to go to pages and then add new. Just call this VC CSS. Click on save draft. I'm going to click on backend editor to open that. And there's a little gear icon here. If we click on there, we have our custom CSS settings that appear right here. And before I go and show you how to do it in the front end editor, we're going to add an element in here. So just add a text block. And in here, we have some design options. So the CSS box allows you to add margins, border, and padding onto this element, which is normally what you do in CSS. This is one of the ways, if you use a lot of CSS in the design options panel, that things can get confusing if you're also assigning margins, borders, and padding in your page specific CSS or in the global CSS. And then if we head over to the row editor, the row settings, we have the same thing again, margins, border, and padding that we can make row specific. And then we have the page specific CSS, and then we have the global CSS. So if you have CSS in all these different areas, things can get a little crazy really quickly. And I keep harping on that because I have gone through it in the past. I have felt that pain and I don't want you to feel it. Heading out to the front end editor now. And we get, again, we have the familiar gear icon up at the top. If we click on there, we can set the page title in there and add our custom CSS. And like I said, we have that same annotation guideline here to help us write valid CSS rules. Display, display upper, which is not a correct rule. And here it says a bunch of stuff, did it wrong. These are the options you could have used 
for display. There's quite a few of them. Just gonna pick one of those. And then it's correct. We have our warning gone and our page specific CSS is valid. So that's how we do page specific CSS in the front end editor, the back end editor, on individual elements and in the global editor. And to top all that off, you can also do CSS in the theme itself. So all that to say, try to keep your CSS in one place. You will thank me. I know it's easy to just pop in here and quickly add some CSS and be done with it. It's the lazy way of doing it. And at some point it will bite you in the butt. I can guarantee it. As you know, Visual Composer is a premium plugin which you can buy from codecanning.net. If you buy it through the link below, I get a couple percentage of the purchase price. There's no extra cost to you, but what I'm gonna send to you if you buy it through that link is my complete Visual Composer course for free because basically I'm being paid by the Visual Composer instead of paid by you. So I'm gonna give you that course for free. All you have to do is send me the receipt after you purchase Visual Composer and I will get you access to that course. If you have a theme that has Visual Composer so you don't actually buy the plugin, you won't have access to the template library and a couple other features, but I will give you a heavy discount for the Visual Composer course if you have a theme that has Visual Composer. So if that's the case, just send me an email at bjorn at wplearninglab.com Say you have such and such a theme with Visual Composer and I will send you the discount information. So the next step is go ahead, click below, buy Visual Composer, send me the receipt, learn all about it in my complete course and start building awesome stuff with Visual Composer. So like I said over and over in the screen capture, keep your CSS in one place and try to make it global whenever you can to keep things clean and easier for you to manage in the future. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos on the right hand side so you can learn more about WordPress or just keep on cruising along in this Visual Composer playlist. And until next time, keep crushing it with WordPress and I will see you in the next video.